Hey there, and welcome to Noctis on YouTube. The SR-71, unofficially known as the Blackbird, is a long-range, advanced, strategic reconnaissance aircraft developed from the Lockheed A-12 and YF-12A aircraft. The first flight of an SR-71 took place on December 22, 1964, and the first SR-71 to enter service was delivered to the 4,200th, later 9th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing at Beale Air Force Base in January 1966. The U.S. Air Force retired its fleet of SR-71S on January 26, 1990, because of a decreasing defense budget and high costs of operation. During its 24 years of service, the SR-71 Blackbird gathered intelligence in some of the world's most hostile environments. The Blackbird evaded all 4,000 missiles fired at it and, to this day, remains the only USAF aircraft to never lose a crew member associated with it, whether in the air or on the ground. But could the SR-71 be shot down by missile systems such as Russia's S-300 or S-400? The SR-71 Blackbird was a strategic reconnaissance aircraft developed by Lockheed Martin in the 1960s. It was designed to fly at speeds of over Mach 3 and altitudes of over 80,000 feet, making it virtually invulnerable to enemy air defenses. The Blackbird was used by the U.S. Air Force and NASA for various missions, such as spying on the Soviet Union, China and other countries, testing new technologies, and conducting scientific research. The S-300 and S-400 are advanced surface-to-air missile systems developed by Russia. They are capable of detecting and intercepting various types of targets, such as aircraft, drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles. The S-300 and S-400 are considered to be among the most formidable air defense systems in the world, posing a serious threat to any intruder in their range. So, how come the SR-71 Blackbird could evade these powerful missiles? Well, there are several reasons for that. First of all, the SR-71 had a very low radar cross-section, meaning that it was difficult to detect by radar. The Blackbird had a sleek shape, and a special paint that absorbed radar waves, reducing its visibility. The SR-71 also had electronic countermeasures, such as jamming devices and decoys that could confuse or mislead the enemy radars. Secondly, the SR-71 had a very high speed and altitude, meaning that it could outrun and outfly any missile. The Blackbird could accelerate to over Mach 3.3 and climb to over 85,000 feet in a matter of minutes, leaving behind any pursuer. The SR-71 also had a variable geometry inlet system that controlled the airflow into the engines, allowing it to maintain optimal performance at different speeds and altitudes. Thirdly, the SR-71 had a very skilled and experienced crew, meaning that they could execute evasive maneuvers and tactics to avoid being hit. The Blackbird pilots were specially selected and trained for this demanding job. They had to wear pressurized suits and helmets that resembled those of astronauts. They also had to monitor multiple instruments and systems while flying at extreme conditions. The SR-71 pilots were able to react quickly and intelligently to any threat or situation. In addition to the U.S. Air Force, NASA also flew four SR-71S in the 1990s as research aircraft for high-speed and high-altitude studies, as well as support aircraft for the U.S. Air Force. The SR-71 was originally developed as a reconnaissance aircraft 
to spy on and capture images of enemy territories for the U.S. intelligence agencies. At that time, there were certain areas that could not be photographed by spy satellites orbiting the Earth, making the role of the SR-71 spy plane and the camera it carried extremely vital in collecting high-value images and information from enemy territories. One of the biggest risks for aircraft entering enemy territory is the threat from surface-to-air missiles, or SAMs. During that era, Soviet-made SAMs were a nightmare for U.S. fighter pilots. According to nationalinterest.org, about 4,000 missiles were fired at the SR-71 during its operational lifetime, but none of them were able to bring it down due to its advanced missile decoy systems, incredible speed, and operational altitude. The first missile fired at an SR-71 aircraft occurred in July 1968 during the Vietnam War. At that time, the U.S. Air Force's SR-71 was conducting a sortie over North Vietnam when two missiles were fired by North Vietnamese forces, but they missed their target. Due to the extreme speed and altitude of the SR-71, the pilot and crew of the aircraft used special pressure suits and helmets, with specifications similar to those used by astronauts. Throughout its operational history, a total of 32 SR-71s were produced, and despite some accidents, none of the aircraft were successfully shot down by enemy forces. The SR-71 was capable of flying up to 15,000 miles, or approximately 24,000 kilometers with aerial refueling, showcasing its global mission capabilities. Due to the high operational and maintenance costs of the SR-71, as well as the increasing development of spy satellites, the U.S. Air Force decided to retire the SR-71 from their fleet in the 1990s. Some of the aircraft were preserved in museums, including one numbered 972 that set four international speed records, which is now on display at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum Udvar Hazy Center in Virginia. For many pilots and crew members, the SR-71 represented aviation technology that was ahead of its time and difficult to believe it could be built and operated during its era. Reportedly, Lockheed Martin has plans to continue the SR-71 legacy in the development of the SR-72, dubbed the Son of Blackbird. According to some information, the SR-72 is a hypersonic, unmanned aircraft with a speed of Mach 6 or 6 times the speed of sound, said to be the successor of the SR-71, although this secret project remains shrouded in mystery until today. Speculations about the development of the SR-72 resurfaced when Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works division was involved in the making of the Top Gun Maverick movie, which was released in May 2022. In the opening scene of the film, a fictional hypersonic aircraft called the Dark Star was featured, with a depicted speed of Mach 10 or 10 times the speed of sound, powered by a scramjet or supersonic combustion ramjet engine. The full-scale mock-up design of the Dark Star, created by the Skunk Works division for the film, was deemed to have a design similarity to the SR-72 being developed by Lockheed Martin. 